one is a resource that you can ask for anything, and they will give you resources for a domestic violence situation. So if you cannot remember that long number, dial 211. Yes. Or it also says um, call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. Okay. So effects, the effects of domestic violence on children. Many children exposed to violence in the home are also victims of physical abuse. Children who witness domestic violence or are victims of abuse themselves are at serious risk for long-term physical and mental health problems. See, that's the thing right there. Um, children who witness violence between parents may also be, a great, be at greater risk of being violent in the future. Oh, oh, violent. I know somebody who, um, who experienced that. They um, actually was one of our models in the calendar, that our 2019 calendar, and their testimony, which they share in the calendar, so it's not like I'm just telling their business, um, they divulged that they watched their mother be abused by their stepfather as they were growing up. It wasn't like, oh, I just experienced it one time. It wasn't like I experienced it a year. She experienced it her whole, like, coming up as a kid. And um, until when she got a certain age, um, if I'm if I'm repeating it correctly, she they ended up fighting him, and then it stopped. You know, it, it went to another level where they ended up stopping the violence, and I believe he moved out. All these things, but I'm saying that she was affected by it. But the testimony, or no, the part that she shared, I don't want to say testimony. The well, it was a testimony. She realized that she was affected by how her mom was abused in front of her, and it affected her relationship. Mm-hmm. So in a relationship that she was going through, I remember she shared that, you know, she was quick to be aggressive when they she would have an argument with her mate. Like she would be like, like she like combative where she's a gopher bad, like, oh, you going, what? Like, and then almost to the point getting ready to pick up something to attack them because she's thinking that she needs to protect herself. So she became like a person where you, you're defensive and then you're ready to protect yourself physically as you're thinking that, oh, it's going to lead to violence, physical violence. So that's one of the things that happens to um, youth as well, to kids. And yes, you ladies and gentlemen, yes, yes, I'm here. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, um, most of the time in society or in the media, it's also, I mean, it's often said that men, or the abusers, but I'm here to let you know that women abuse as well. It's just that they seem to talk about the men more so in the media than they do women. And then there are men that were raised not to hit a woman, and they're getting beat up by a woman, and they feel embarrassed or ashamed to say that they got beat up by a woman because they're going to be ridiculed or they're going to be called names. So just be supportive of the men and understand what they're going through and encourage them to be willing to tell or report it just like we encourage women. Um, yeah. Going back to what I was reading, I didn't read the whole thing right, so let me go back. Children who witness violence between parents may also be at a greater risk of being violent in their future relationships. So it kind of touches on what Miss Vicky was saying with the example she gave. If you are a parent, who is experiencing abuse, it can be difficult to know how to protect your child. And I believe that is so true. Um, Yes. Continuing with the short-term effects of domestic violence or abuse on children, uh, children in homes where one parent is abused may may feel fearful and anxious. They may also be on guard wondering when the next violent event will happen. This can cause them to react in different ways depending on their age. So before I go down the list, before our time is up, did you want to comment on what I read, Ms. Vicky? No, I was just going to say that um, that some children that are in those type of situations, it becomes a revolving door for them. Like they become victims in a, a in a lot of different environments. Like they might have been a victim at home, and then they go to another environment. They become a victim again, 
It's like it becomes a way of life of them being a victim. Like it's something that because they're in survival mode, like if they're not rescued from right. that environment, then it becomes something right. that they're used to. So then they don't know how to fight. Yeah. So they just submit to the vic- to the victimization. So, yeah. Okay. So vic- I'm not using a big word. They they just submit to, and I don't mean to giggle. I'm just laughing because I said that word. Um, they submit to the the treatment that they're how they're being treated. Right. You know, so that's all they is, know when they think it's normal. Yeah. And they think it's and normal. Maybe they don't feel like it's on, it's comfortable, but you know, they adapt to it. That you know, we could say the word normal, but to some people, they don't even say that. It's just they adapt to what's going on. They don't look at it as normal. They just say, oh, well, I'll just adapt to it because I know how to survive. They go into survival mode, you know, so. Thank you for sharing yeah. this. And if they're not taught to so, tell, if they're not taught, if they're not yeah. taught to fight back, then they won't fight back. Right. So if they don't know better, then they don't do better. Some some children have an innate um, reaction that they will, you know, fight back, but all children don't do that. And that's one thing that we have to do better is not be so judgmental when somebody does Hello. divulge something that they've been through. Because sometimes people can be really judgmental. They'll just be like, well, why you didn't say nothing or this and that, you know. And you don't know unless you walked in those shoes. And if you did, then God, thank God you got out of it. But the next person didn't. So don't be judging. So, yeah. Well, Miss Vicky is really all going today, isn't she? Miss Vicky is really and then, you, and then you wonder why people don't want to come say say anything to you because you make them feel bad, you know. Yeah. So if they not saying something to you, then it must really... be something wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm teasing Miss Vicky, but she's on point. I'm just teasing her because she's really on one today. She, yeah. All right. You yeah, this is my Ms. area, Vicky. girl. You know that. Yeah, this is. Yes, this is just speaking. This is my testimony right here. Okay. So Um, I'm going to go through it real quick, and we'll go back to it, recap next week because of time. So as I was saying, you know, there's children in the home. So we're going to share a little bit about each age group of the children and how it affects them. So children in preschool. Young children who witness intimate partner violence may start start doing things they used to do when they were younger. Wow. Such as bed wetting, thumb sucking, increased crying and whining. So if they did that when they were little and they see in the body, they might go back to doing that and they might be a little bit older. They may also develop difficulty falling or staying asleep, show signs of terror, such as shutting, shuddering, oh, such as stuttering, excuse me. Signs of terror such as stuttering or hiding and show signs of severe separation anxiety. Uh, any comment on that, Miss Vicky? Because I know this is your area. That's, yeah, you know, I mean, people, everything you're saying is true. I mean, we don't have a lot of time okay. for me right. to speak too much on it, but that is true. They do develop all those different traits um, due to the fact that they're in an abusive environment. You know, children can have PTSD. You know, it's traumatic. You know, it's traumatic. Some some children handle it differently and some don't, you know. So some are, you know, they have that strength inside where they can overcome it and then they have some that don't, you know. However, okay. even the ones that have the strength to overcome, they still pick up uh, bad behaviors along the way. And then they have to work on them as they get older. But uh, as okay. time is coming then- to a ch- to an end. Yes. What were you going to so say? I'm going to do one more. We, we got one more. We can do okay. school age children. School age mm-hmm. children. Children in this age range may feel guilty about the youth and blame themselves for it. So true. Domestic violence and abuse hurts children's self esteem. They may not participate in school activities or get good grades, have fewer friends than others, and get into trouble more often. They also you said they have a lot of because I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you what you said. I don't know if you were responding at the same time you were reading it, but you were saying that they blame themselves. Is that what you said? Yeah, these are the school age children section. I know. I was trying to understand children, what you said because I couldn't yeah. understand it. Yeah, children. I'll read it again. Can you read children that part again? Age, right? 
yes, children in this age range, which is school age children, may feel guilty about the abuse and blame themselves for it. Okay. Okay. Dem- domestic violence. Domestic violence and abuse hurts children. So they may not participate in school activities or good, good grades, have fewer friends than others, and get into trouble more often. They also may have a lot of headaches and stomach aches. And the next one is mm. teens, but we'll go into that next week. So. Okay. Well, that was enlightening. So it sure was. And, um, we're gonna, we, you know, we got a little more time, but we're just gonna give encouragement. Um, yeah. Please. If anybody is, if anybody is going through it, you know, uh, call um, the hotline. Call two one one. Call nine one one. What can I? How can I say this? If possible, as as Vicky was saying, that many people can be judgmental. It's easier said than done until you're in it. So find someone that you feel confident that you can confide in and know that they're not going to throw it back in your face. They're going to be there when you're ready to leave. They're going to be there if you decide to stay until you're ready to leave. Find that person to help you get through this. <clears throat> Any other Bye. words you want to give, Vicki? <laughs> well, um, you know, work on yourself, too, even in that environment, if you're able to um, self Care is always great. It helps you to be creative, even in your situation, to figure out how to get out of it. Because if you, you're doing self-care, then you're strengthening your mind, your heart, your body, you know, your spirit, so that you can be strong enough to get out of that situation. And you're aware to know when it's the right time to leave. Um, so that's my thing, just self-care. And then after you get out, self, so that you don't go back into that type of situation. So, much love. And what is your definition? Oh, we're hmm? gonna end our, um, our we're gonna end our music a little early. Oh, I get to listen to two minutes worth of music. All righty then. Oh no, we can. Oh. What were you getting ready to ask me about oh. self care? What self care is? Oh yeah, I would. I would. I was gonna give you uh, have you tell the group what that is. What is that for some that may not know? Everybody's um, self care so is um, taking time out for yourself, finding out what it is that you like, um, journaling, um, finding a stress reliever, putting yourself in an environment that makes you feel peaceful, um, gives you tranquility, peace. Um, you know, maybe listen to comedy so you can laugh. Laugh, laughter is cu- is a cure for the soul and the body. Um, yeah, so there's a list of things. You can always go online and look for self-care. So, uh, DJ yeah, Dika, so it's Nikki time to go. It's time to go. It's time to party our way out of here. Let's go. Let's go. All righty, then. We'll see y'all next Alrighty, week. We we'll see you next Sunday. We hear from you. We talk to you. Please hit us up on social media if you need to. Hit that like button, subscribe, all those things. We, we You can find us in a lot of places. We Peace and love, y'all. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Divine Victory uh, Ministries with the Three Keys. We are on Instagram, Divine Victory Ministries. We are also on Twitter, D, uh, DBM418, uh, and the list goes on and on. We'll give you more information, but we're going to end with another song from Elevate Your Game called Love and Respect, and here we go.